with respect to the, I mean, over the years, there's been the clamor about the separation of the AGF from the Minister of Justice. How tenable is this? Let's hear from you, Chindu. Well, I, I guess the, the clamor has been, and from, from a perspective, the clamor has been fueled by the fact that um, people think that there is a conflict of interest between both offices. Okay. And there may be that there's, in some instances, abuse. Um, and so the clamor has been there, but I think more recently there's been a recent push and in the media. I think that even the National Assembly has um, mooted the idea of commencing the process of um, separating the offices. So it's, um, uh, it's um, a tenable clamor, if you like, whether it, 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 it's practicable or whether it will, it will um, be achieved within this administration is something that remains to be seen. We can say. Yes. All right, Toby, let's hear from you. I completely agree with Chinidum. I think it's a very tenable position. Crucial, and I mean, it's crucial. The, a, a major theme to that argument is that there appears to be some conflict between the okay. rules of an okay. Attorney General of the Federation as well as the Minister of Justice. Now, the Minister of Justice would operate as any other minister appointed by the federal government or by the presidency and is by nature then sort of um, answerable to the to government. Them. Whereas the role of an attorney general should be to act exactly on behalf of the citizen, citizenry. And as we may be aware, sometimes the policies of the federal government may actually be at loggerheads, as it were, with, mm -hmm. with what the aspirations of the citizen, citizenry really is. Yeah. But then moving forward, if this clamor is you know, actualized, do you think the purpose for the clamor in the first instance would be achieved? I want to go first. <laughs> I guess that, that, that remains to be seen. Uh, yes, the jury is out there. Yes, it remains yes, to be seen. Yes. How that would all pan out. Yes. The, the problem with Nigeria has never been the, the, the functions or, or the offices. How, how, the, how, the, how those things, how the persons in those offices have carried out their functions. So mm -hmm. even if the offices are separated, we may still have the same problem where, for example, you have. Um, an attorney general who is not independent, as it were, who may be removed um, um, at the beck and call of his appointer, or, or for any reason, or for any flimsy reason at all. So it's 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 more of um, ensuring um, that we have strong institutions, and, and even in scenarios where they are fused, if we had strong institutions in Nigeria. I don't think we, uh, have, yeah, so we, much we of have a problem. But isn't that a cause for concern? What is obtainable in other regions? So I think in the UK you actually have it split. Is you it? have, yes, okay. that's what I, I, that's my understanding. Okay. You could double check that is that you have a split in the UK, in Kenya as well as in South Africa. Yeah, how prevalent have, is that though? Yes. How? How prevalent? I mean, how, in terms well, of I know of those three jurisdictions, and I think mm -hmm. th 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 at least that's a starting point where you can sort of glean. From, from, from yeah. But then when Fair this enough. is implemented, uh, would there be a need for a constitutional amendment of some sort? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> it's a constitutional provision. As a matter of fact, the Office of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice is the only office, only ministerial position, as it were, that is specifically provided for in the Constitution. Therefore, if you have a president or a, or a governor who decides not to appoint ministers or commissioners, he cannot decide not to have the mm -hmm. Minister of Justice, Justice, Attorney General. So it's a constitutional provision, and therefore, I in implementing the, the separation of the offices will involve a constitutional amendment, which is why I said whether it will happen in the life of this administration or in the near yeah, future yeah, yeah. Is, is, remains to be seen. I, I, I think in okay. 2017, actually, there was a move, a move by the Senate, actually, mm. to, to, there was a proposal which was voted on by the Senate to amend and split the office. It was part of certain amendments to the Constitution. That didn't see the light of the day okay. because we couldn't achieve that threshold, the two-third threshold for the state across the states, house yes, of yes, assemblies. Yes. But what so, does this portend for Nigeria as a country? <sighs> <laughs> that deep breath. I, I, I think the year has bigger issues. <laughs> Although from a perspective, um, I mean, you're not going to have foreign investors 
come in as much as they would if there's a there's a perception that mm. this that the that um, the justice sector or or the yes. or an arm of um, um as independent as yes should. yes because certain, certain government if, in fact the attorney general is the chief law officer of the federation remember mm -hmm. of the state as it were and certain key um um economic certain key decisions which have economic impact stops at his office. Absolutely. So, so there's some concern um, about uh, uh, the um, supporting the office, but I think we have bigger problems now. We should face those problems. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tommy, do you have anything to say regarding that? I, I completely align with with um, Chinedum's thought. That's fine. Okay, so at this point, let's just move on to the conversation around the DSS and then um, insurance issue, right? Yes. So what's your take on the alleged evasion of the court by the DSS? Again, I say alleged. I mean, alleged because nobody seems to have the full fact. I, I don't have the full facts. The, from the videos we, we've seen, there's been a lot of commentaries on both sides. Yeah, yeah but, but from a legal standpoint, you know, um, the law is that you cannot affect arrest in a court, in a court when the court is in session. Sitting. Uh, the court is sitting, the way court proceedings are, mm -hmm. uh, are ongoing. And the reason is simple. The court uh, proceedings cannot be disrupted. Um, if the DSS has good reasons to arrest anybody, provided they, they follow the due process of the law, there shouldn't be a problem with that. And what is the right way to have gone about this if, peradventure, that did happen? Well, I now, think once, once the arrest was not effected whilst the court was sitting. Yes. Then that could be a premise, even though so. Th th well, that's a legal premise. Taking away the the drama around the rearrest. Okay. Yes. Yes. The drama perhaps is needless. And finally, what's what's the constitutional backing for the action of the DSF? If DSS, if there be any at all. In, what action now, in rearresting or in? Both. Yes, in both. <laughs> well, so you see, law enforcement agencies have broad powers in relation to um, ensuring peace and good order. Um, um, whether the DSS has acted within the ambits of the law in this case mm -hmm. will be determined by the court. I mean, the case is in the court. Uh, but um, I think we need to balance the need to keep our society safe and the need for people to move around freely or express themselves freely. Mm -hmm. We need to achieve that balance. All right, Toby, your final Absolutely. word. Uh, well, it's, uh, personally has been, um, um, I think things could have been done um, um, much, less dramatic. Yes, in the less dramatic, <laughs> dramatic way. way. So we don't veer off into emotions and politics, mm -hmm. as it were. But strictly speaking, I think things could have been done in a much, much less dramatic way. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us.